What's growing on, gardeners? It's August 14th. Summer is winding down here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina, and I'm dreaming of cooler fall temperatures. On today's video, I'm going to share with you five veggies that you can plant in fall and forget about all winter. These are the easiest to grow, most cold hardy veggies, so you can have yourself a winter garden with almost no work. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and check out my Amazon store and Spreadshop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom apparel and gear. If you follow my channel, you know that I live on the southeastern coast of North Carolina, Zone 8B. And because my winters are mild enough, there is a lot of things that I can grow throughout the winter that most people don't have the luxury of growing. That's what makes this video so exciting. These are the most cold hardy things that you can grow out in your garden. Almost everyone can grow these all winter long. And for those of you that take the winter off from gardening and don't feel like spending much time outside in the winter months, this video is for you because these five veggies require almost no work at all. You plant them in the fall and then they thrive on neglect. So you can have yourself a garden without putting in the effort. Over the course of this video, I will be listing many different varieties of seeds. So for your convenience, I will place links down in the video description to as many of the varieties that I mention as possible to make your life easier. Veggie number one is one of the easiest things you can grow in your garden over the fall and winter, and it will grow in even the coldest, harshest climates, and that is garlic. It doesn't get any easier than planting garlic. All you do is you dig a hole, you place your garlic cloves, you add some fertilizer, you mulch it, you water it, and then you just let your garlic cloves sit in the ground and accumulate chill hours over the winter. Garlic has to go through a process called vernalization. That's just a fancy way of saying accumulating chill hours below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And depending on the type of garlic that you grow, you'll need more or less chill hours. So there are two types of garlic, soft neck garlic and hard neck garlic. Soft neck garlic needs less chill and can grow in USDA hardiness zones 5 through 10. Hard neck garlic requires more chill and can grow in USDA hardiness zones 3 through eight but in actuality garlic can be grown down to zone zero for the really cold tolerant hardneck varieties now because garlic needs chill hours in order to bulb properly here where i live in zone eight where my winters are milder i have to plant my garlic at the end of october because i don't want to put it in ground when it is too warm because i don't want my garlic to sprout right away eventually here in the warmer zones the garlic will sprout and i will get green tops poking through the soil and because of that if i get really dry spells throughout the winter i do need to keep my garlic irrigated because i can't let the soil completely dry out or else the green tops will fail. So pretty much that's the only work somebody like me has to do to garlic throughout the winter. If you live in a very cold zone, you may find that the garlic cloves have to sit underground and accumulate hundreds of chill hours before they break through the surface and they may not actually break through the surface until spring. In your case, you really don't have to do anything at all. You just let the garlic cloves sit and hang out and chill until it warms up in the spring and then they will break through. Just whatever you do, make sure you mulch on top of the garlic cloves with something like two to three inches of a natural mulch to insulate them, especially if you live in a colder zone. That's really all you need to do to plant garlic. Veggie number two is so easy, it rivals garlic in ease of growing, and that is leeks. I have fallen in love with growing leeks over recent years because it is so easy and they are so versatile. Leeks are part of the allium family, so they are closely related to garlic and onions, but unlike garlic and onions, which we harvest for the bulbs, we harvest leeks for the greens. Because of that, they are day length neutral and you can grow leeks year round. There are varieties that do great in the summer, there are varieties that do great in the winter, and lots of varieties that do well in the in-between. So for that reason, I never stop growing leeks in my climate. If you live in zone seven or warmer, you can grow literally any leek that you want throughout the winter because any leek variety is going to be tolerant down to 10 degrees Fahrenheit briefly. So if you don't get any colder than that, you don't have to be selective with the varieties of leeks that you grow. 
If you live in a zone with mild winters like I do, I recommend you grow either the King Richard or the Dawn Giant varieties of leeks because these are great all-around performers that can take down to 10 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter, but they are also more heat tolerant so they can stand in your garden and not bolt throughout the summer. So because these are such all-around well performers, I can plant a new succession crop of these of about 6 to 12 plants every three months and I can have a fresh crop of leeks growing every single season. Now, if you live in a climate with much colder winters, never fear, you can still grow leeks, you just need the correct varieties and the proper technique. If you live in an area with cold winters, you want to get yourself two types of leeks, a winter standing leek and a heat tolerant leek. Now, the two varieties that I just mentioned are going to do great in the spring, summer, and fall for you, but you want to get yourself a winter standing leek that can take extreme cold. And some good varieties are Bandit, Giant Musselberg, Blue Soleils, and Oslo. These standing leeks, when mature, can sit out in your garden in below zero temperatures, even under a foot of snowpack, and they will be just fine. Now the way you want to grow a winter standing leek is you want to start them in transplant trays indoors in the middle of summer and then transplant them out into your garden at the end of summer, beginning of fall. That way they can put on as much growth as possible and roughly hit their maturity in late fall when the hard freezes and the cold nights start. Because once they are fully grown and mature, they can stand in your garden all winter long. So what happens is the days will get short, the soil temperatures will become freezing and then they will stall and just sit there like a giant refrigerator. So anytime you want to go out into the garden and harvest a leek, you just walk outside and you yank one up. That's all you have to do. The key in making this work is timing because you need to plant them out early enough in the year that they can gain full maturity and sit out as mature leeks for your harvest. If they are still too small, they won't be all that cold hardy. So the key is get them in the ground early enough that they can stand as mature leeks before the really bad cold comes. Veggie number three that you can plant out in your garden in the fall and basically let sit neglected all winter long are bunching onions. We also call these green onions or spring onions. We do not harvest bunching onions for the bulb, we harvest them for the green tops. Now bunching onions are very similar to leeks in the sense that they are extremely cold hardy but different varieties have different tolerances to heat and cold. Now like a leek, I can plant any variety of bunching onion I want here in zone eight. So I like this Scarlet Bandit variety right here. This is a great all-purpose onion. It easily handles temperatures down to 10 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter, and it can tolerate the heat here and stands most of the summer. So just like with leeks, I could plant a fresh crop of bunching onions every three to six months using this all-purpose variety and constantly have fresh spring onions throughout my garden. But if you live in a climate with very cold winters, just like with the leeks, you're going to want two different types of bunching onions. You're going to want a heat tolerant variety and a very cold tolerant variety. And then you'll sow the warm season onions in the summer and it'll tolerate and stand the heat. And you'll sow the super cold hardy varieties in the end of summer and then it will grow throughout the fall and it will stand in your garden throughout the winter. Now some great examples of very cold hardy bunching onions are evergreen long white and ramrod. Both of these varieties can take temperatures below 10 degrees Fahrenheit when fully mature, possibly below zero degrees. And again, they can sit in snowpack. That way, anytime you want to harvest them, you just come outside with a pair of scissors and you clip off the green onion tops that you want, and then they will grow back in time and you can use them like a cut and come again, where you just clip them once they grow back as many times as you want until eventually they quit on you. So again, the success in cold climates is all going to be based on your timing. You're going to want to start the seeds indoors and transplant trays as soon as possible. Transplant them out into your garden in early fall. Let them get growing while it's still fairly mild and the days are decently warm and the sun is decently strong and then they will basically pause when it starts getting really cold and dark in the winter time and then you can just go out at your leisure and harvest them as necessary. They will stand in your garden with little to no work. Veggie number four is the king of the winter root vegetables. That is the humble carrot. Carrots are one of my favorite things to grow in the winter time because not only are they insanely easy to grow, but their sugar content is inversely proportional to temperature. 
What does that mean? Well, that means the hotter the temperature, the starchier your carrots are, but the colder the temperature, the sweeter your carrots are. Carrots produce much more sugar in the winter time. So that fact, paired with their incredible cold hardiness, makes them a must grow for anybody throughout the winter. Now, just like every veggie I mentioned in this video, while all carrots are cold hardy, some are more cold tolerant than others, and some have been bred to be more heat resistant than others. So if you live in a zone with very cold winters, where the soil freezes to a very deep depth, you need to make sure that you grow the most cold adapted carrots. That being said, if you live in a milder zone like I do, it doesn't matter what variety of carrot you grow, every variety of carrot is going to be fine to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. While carrot tops generally do bronze and take a little bit of damage at 10 degrees Fahrenheit, the roots themselves are more cold hardy and they can take in many cases zero degree Fahrenheit temperatures. If you live in a place with very cold winters, you should select varieties of carrots that were specifically bred to stand for long periods of time in very cold soil temperatures. Some examples of carrots that were bred to do this are Nantes, Royal Chantenay, Merida, and Bolero. All of these varieties would be good choices for places with very cold winters. Now that being said, if you live in a cold zone, you are going to want to do the same thing to your carrots that I've recommended for leeks and bunching onions. And that is you want to plant your carrots in the late summer so they can grow and reach maturity in mid to late fall when the hard freezes and frosts begin. They are not going to grow very much when the day is short and the temperatures are very cold. The goal is to get them to maturity so they can just stand and stay put outside in your garden like a giant refrigerator and then you can go out at your leisure and harvest them. Now it is important to get the timing down because if you're too late on your planting and they don't fully develop then you're not going to have carrots to harvest. So it is very important that you check the days to maturity on the packet and you time it out in such a way that they will mature before the days get too cold and too short in order for them to grow properly. So for that reason, it's better to be a little early than a little late. Now, is there a temperature out there that will get so cold that it could split the carrot roots and damage them and ruin their quality? Probably, but I've never found it. We had a 100 year freeze back in 2017 and we had back to back eight degree nights and it did nothing bad to the carrots. They sailed right through it and I didn't even grow a really winter hardy variety. So I'm very confident that if you play your cards right, you get the carrots planted so they reach maturity before it gets too cold. You can take some serious low temperatures. And if you start to see some of the carrots taking damage at some point because you live in a really extreme climate, just pull them all and store them in your garage and they'll keep for quite a while. Now, I'll be honest, I was a little reluctant to add this last thing to the list because it is a little bit more work than the other four things and it's not quite as cold hardy, but I'm going to add it anyway and that is collards. I wanted to have a good quality edible green on this list and collards are the most cold hardy of all the brassicas. Yes, even more cold hardy than kale. So if you want a very good quality green to grow out in your garden all winter long, collards are the answer. Now, are there more cold hardy leafy greens out there? Yes, I could have recommended something like sorrel or tatsoi, but I didn't want to recommend something that's just a glorified weed that nobody really knows how to cook with or really wants to eat just to add something to a list. I wanted to give you something that you'd really love and collards produce big, beautiful heads of delicious greens that are perfect for making soups and stews all winter long. And let's be honest, is there anything we love more than soups and stews during the winter time? I know I don't. Last winter, I grew a big bed of collard greens out in my garden, and they were absolutely no challenge here in zone eight. At no point did they ever take any cold damage, and we got down to, I think, 17 degrees Fahrenheit last year. No challenge at all, not even a little bit of leaf burn at those temperatures. That being said, if you live in zones colder than zone eight, you may have to do a little bit of work in order to grow collards throughout the winter. So what I would recommend you do is just like so many of the crops that I've mentioned, start the seeds now in transplant trays, 
transplant them out into your garden in early fall and let the heads get as large and mature as possible before the very cold temperatures come because larger, more mature heads of collards are going to be more cold tolerant and they will stand in your garden more successfully. Now, if you are going to get very cold nights of say 20 degrees or colder, you would probably want to just pull an agricultural fabric or a frost blanket on top of them to protect them from that really hard freeze. Or alternatively, you can build a hoop house or some row covers over them. That's precisely what I did here to make my life very easy in this raised bed garden that you see right here covered in sweet potato vines. This is where I grew a bunch of red leaf lettuce and collards all winter last year. So all I did was I built a little PVC hoop structure and then I clipped on some agricultural fabric in the dead of January when it got very cold. I left the ends open. It was just designed to keep the hard frost off of them. And then the lettuce and the collards grew with zero effort all throughout the winter. So you don't even have to go through the effort of pulling off a cover every single day. You can just make a little PVC hoop house structure like this and then you can just clip the agricultural fabric on and you really only have to do it once until you remove it when things start warming up in late winter. Now, if you want to know how I built that PVC hoop structure right there, I will link to a video both above and down in the video description. It is a piece of cake. It will show you exactly how to build one of them in less than an hour. However, if you don't want to go through that work, I understand that as well. You can follow the same procedure and you can let the collard stand out in your garden throughout the winter until it gets so incredibly cold they risk taking damage and then you can just harvest them all at once and then use them at your leisure. If you leave these to grow all throughout the winter though, the cool thing about collards is they don't necessarily head on you. You can just pick the leaves off and they will keep growing and growing and growing until it gets so warm in the spring that it'll bolt. So if you're willing to maintain the collard greens, you can peel back the leaves and then give them some more fertilizer and they will slowly regenerate the leaves kind of like a cut and come again style of harvest. And that right there are five of the easiest veggies that you can plant in fall and grow throughout the winter for almost no work. I say almost no work because nothing in life is truly ever free. Everything will take a little bit of effort, but I'm telling you right now, these are some of the easiest, lowest maintenance things that you can grow. And if you get them in the ground early enough, I think you will be surprised just how much cold they can take and how long they can stand out in your winter garden, even with you mostly completely neglecting them. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when I release more videos like these. Like I said, I'll place direct links to all of the seeds that I possibly can that I featured in this video down in the video description. As for everything I use in my garden in real life, all of those things are linked in my Amazon storefront down in the video description. So click the Amazon storefront link down in the video description. You'll see all those products. And while you're down there, please check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. All right, we're going to play with the Nerf football with Dale. Uh-oh, there it goes. Come on, Dale. Go, Dale, go. Go, Dale, go. I'm going to get that ball. I'm going to get it. Get the ball. Get that ball. Get it. He's vicious. This is the first day we haven't had a thunderstorm in eight days, and we're so excited that we can finally play. All right, Dale. Can you drop it? He's trying. Oh, so good. I know how hard it is, buddy. And... Oh, right in the noser. Oh, give it kisses, give it kisses. Oh, nice catch, Billy Buckner.